Okay. Okay. I don't know why I always start with okay. I guess it's just the way that I get into things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. The question today, what is something that is overrated in your mind and something that is underrated? This can be anything. And I can go first if you want to think. Yeah, you go first. That's a hard one. Okay. First up, I have a lot of things that are overrated because I don't like a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> so overrated is really easy for me. Okay. Overrated, I think, live events. Yeah. Concerts, sporting events, anything like that, yeah. I think are way overrated. I agree. I just, you got to pay a ton of money, first of all. It's hard to get to them. Hard to get to them. Parking is always a nightmare. So yeah. either you pay for parking closer. And then or, it's so expensive. Right. Or you get an Uber, also, also expensive. Also very expensive. You, the last thing you want to do when they're done is walk back the three miles where you park. I'm just thinking about like in college, you right, remember? Right, Or like in grad school when we had to park on Pensacola Street and walk into the stadium. And it was like 5,000 degrees because it was Florida. Yeah. So that aside, then you get there. Okay, cool. The seats are uncomfortable. Let's talk about a concert for a second. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, the music is not as good as the studio recording. Right. Because the studio, rec there are some artists They've that mastered. are, it's some artists mastered. are great, right? Yeah. But the studio recordings are, ma yeah, they're mastered. They're Produced. Maybe it's a bunch of different takes, whatever. It sounds better, right? Yeah. I do think there's something to be said about like being together in a, in a, in a shared experience, I guess there's, but I've never gotten like that level of enjoyment yeah. out of it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just think, and then for sports, it's like you can see so much better at home mm -hmm. on TV and there's so like, yeah, sports broadcasting has advanced so much yeah. further that there's different replays and the broadcasters are usually better. And mm -hmm. In the comfort of your own home, it just feels better. Right. Well, and it's like you might go through all the trouble of like the parking and everything you yeah. just said and your team could lose. Yeah, that's and, a big and one. And you could like go and, you know, pay money for parking and walk really far and be really hot and be uncomfortable on yeah. your bleachers. And yeah. then it could be a loss and yeah. your team could do terribly and that <sighs> would ruin it even more. I don't think I'm wondering. I've been. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, do you remember going to the Patriots Jaguars game? Oh, my word. Yeah. So this was like, what, probably four years ago? This was pre-COVID. Well, I mean, we lived in Tallahassee. That's yeah. why we went. So we lived in Tallahassee, and I'm a big Patriots fan. You can do what you want to me in the comments. I don't care. We have six <laughs> Super Bowls. You can't hurt me. Um, but I'm a big <laughs> Patriots fan, and we thought that Tom Brady was going to be retiring soon. Little did we know that he yeah, was Yeah, we gonna... thought it was going to be like his last year, and it's like, all right, this is Jonah's last chance to see I Tom had never, Brady. I had never seen him live. Mm -hmm. I'd never gone to a – I think that was maybe my first Patriots game in person. Oh, really? I think so. I mean, it's not like the Patriots play in Florida, like where That's you could thing. have seen them I had them gone to often. a Bucks preseason game. Yeah. But I never I never lived in Boston, like when I was old enough to realize, right. that, you know, I lived in Boston when I was really young. Anyway, right. long story short, we went to Jacksonville because it was a short drive. It was a noon game. Yeah. Probably the hottest I think I've ever been. And it been. was like September. It was an early uh, in the season game. And this was back when Jacksonville, we had just played them the year before in the playoffs. We beat them, but Jacksonville thought they were hot stuff, man. Like yeah. they were, oh, dude. So all the Jacksonville people were just... Jacksonville people in general are stupid and annoying, but not everybody in Jacksonville is stupid and annoying. Florida people, they're yeah. annoying. Like yeah, they, everywhere in Florida, yeah. Miami, Tampa, Orlando, they're all annoying. Yeah. Like yeah. that's just, I, I'm one of you. I, I'm, I get were, it. There were a lot of rude fans in our section. So and it's they, like, they were just giving us hell the whole time. And I don't care. No, no. And I didn't even know what had happened, like what the beef was. Yeah, you didn't was. know the context or I anything like I was like, like that. guys, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm but just But we were getting berated in the, in the stands. Yeah. Plus it was just like hot. way too hot. Yeah. And then we lost. We lost by like four. Like thirty or twenty points, like it was not a good loss. Remember. It was not a good loss at all. Anyway, all that to say, like, and then we had to drive an hour and a half to get home. What a useless <laughs> time that was. That I could have done some. I don't know. I there's something to be said about experience, even negative experience being yeah. something that you you know because we have a funny memory now. We can look back right, on it, right? But I do think live events usually let me down. Yeah, I I can think of a few offhand that have been like that was a good experience. I'm glad I did that. But most of the time. I'm miserable by the end of it. I'm just like, why did we, why did we do that? I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Do you have one that's overrated? 
It's anything. Um, it, could, it could be anything. Media. I didn't bring water. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I'm going to be parched by the end of this. Something that's overrated. I'm having a hard time coming up with something that's overrated. Um, do you have one for underrated or no? I do have one for underrated. Okay, good. Give me underrated then. I think being in your pajamas all day is underrated. Oh. I, I think that's accurately rated. I think you would have a hard time finding anybody that says that that's not good. I think people are like, yeah, when I stay in my pajamas all day, like I just feel like I don't get anything done. Like they, I feel like people don't appreciate it. Oh, you okay. know what I mean? I can see that angle. Yes, I can see it. For, I, I'm kind of like that. Yeah, I'm not. You can stay in the same. I work in my pajamas all the time. The same clothes that you slept in? That you slept in? Oh, I got to plug the laptop in before we lose it. Keep talking. Okay. Well, no, not necessarily. Sometimes, yeah. Like, sometimes on Fridays, I call it Goblin Day. <laughs> and I, like, work in my same pajamas. And then, like, I'll, I don't know, shower before I go to bed. Because that's the, next the thing. night and change pajamas at the end of the day. I was about to say, I think that you, you switch out of pajamas and switch into, like, loungewear. Not always. Yeah, but I'm saying, like... I would have a hard time transitioning from like, but I'm a very, like, I have a uniform that I wear to the gym, yeah. you know, like yeah. I'm a very compartmentalized person when yeah. it comes to like, I can't do th certain things on certain days. Yeah. So I can't do certain activities in certain clothing. You yeah. know what I mean? So that would really hurt me. I, I understand. I it. love it. I think it's <laughs> great. I think you are the, one of the select few that may be able to do that. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people, like you said, have that like hard time being in, like, they like can't, turning their brain on. Because, yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't have a problem with that for the most part. In fact, I think it kind of helps me not get stressed about being super productive. Oh. Like it kind of, I think, helps me have more of a, I don't know, relaxed feel about the day. Like where I can still get stuff done, but I don't feel like wow. pressure as well, much. Well, because I think that your natural state mm -hmm. is very much like hyper type productive. A. Hyperproductive. Hyperproductive. To the point where, that's great, but sometimes it does get like. I stress myself out for no overly reason. Overly stressed. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Because so I think it's really underrated to just not change out of your pajamas Man. and stay in your pajamas all day and like still do stuff and like have a day where you get some stuff done, but you can be relaxed about it and I don't be know comfy. If, I don't know if a lot of people are going to agree with you on that. Well, that's it's you asked me the question. No, no. You, you I, didn't I'm, ask them the question. I think it's interesting. I just I'm <laughs> thinking like I definitely think if it's a day where I'm supposed to be resting. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the way that you do it, you work like that's just your normal day. Yeah, all day yesterday, I stayed in my. I would pajamas. have a really, really hard time doing that. I think I got everything done that I needed to. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I just. All right, I'm trying to think of something that's something underrated. that's underrated. Yeah, this is the difference in our personalities. Is I'm I'm always looking for stuff to complain about, and you're yeah. like, you know, and I'm like, you know, you've never thought about how great this is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have anything underrated. I think, really? I feel things are accurately rated a lot of the times. Yeah. I guess that is the difference in our personalities, though, is that you tend to be a bit more of an Eeyore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tend to be. And I, I'm sometimes <laughs> a little bit too positive. Let's pull back the curtain for a second. We recorded 20 minutes of a podcast yesterday, and I was yeah. so negative that I was like, we can't do this. We have to stop. Yeah. Those, that's the lost podcast episode, man. Yeah. I was just... <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's like a food or something that people love that, that you, I don't really overrated? like. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because I feel like that's... I almost oh, feel I like got there's one. something recently. I know one that's underrated. What? Eating the same thing every day. <sighs> Highly underrated. The amount of just like stress that flies off yeah. of you when you don't have to make a decision about what to eat. I will say cooking the same thing every day yeah. has been lovely for me. I can oh. totally turn my brain off. See, that's great. I That's how I feel about eating this. Pretty thing tired day. of Ty the chicken and rice. I understand that. Yeah. And I'm I very much appreciate you hanging you know what? tough with I me. I actually have found a way to make it better. I put oh, huh. I put a bunch of butter on my rice every day. Oh, there night. you go. Yeah. There you go. See? <laughs> so I get the lovely taste of you get some butter chicken. Kerry gold butter. <laughs> I I think the next time that we do a deficit, I will be more prepared to have a little bit more variety, especially in the dinners. Yeah. But I think this time I just I wasn't I wanted to get it done so quickly and I wanted to make the videos about it that I wasn't prepared to like look up other meals that I could eat. And for yeah. some reason the beef just wasn't hitting the same way that it was. It used to. You I used, used to, to love the love, beef and rice. You know what it is? I've replaced the fat that I was getting from the beef mm -hmm. with hummus. So 
I was getting way too many fats, so we had to pull this, the beef out. Mm-hmm. I know something that's overrated. Oh, hit me. Ketchup. Oh, really? Everybody loves ketchup. Salchicha, ketchup. Salchicha. Salchicha. Yeah. I don't like ketchup. I think I don't it's like ketchup stupid. Either. I'm right there with you. I hate it. It's gross. I don't like a lot of tomato based products. See, I do. Like, I like tomato sauce for like pasta. I cook eggs in mm. tomato sauce all the time. I like a tomato sauce that is basically just a vehicle to put a lot of beef in it. Like I don't like a, a raw tomato sauce. You like I a like ragu. a meat sauce yeah. that maybe has a little bit of a tomato yeah. taste to it. But I think ketchup is bad yeah, and I agree. it's overrated. In terms of condiments, ketchup is the, le- like yeah, the, worst, the one. worst one. I'd rather ha- – like I did my fries and mayo. Don't come for me it once again. Good. It's good. Um, mustard, fantastic. You don't like mustard, though. I don't like yellow mustard, oh, but I like Dijon mustard. A good, a little beef frank with some relish and some mustard on it. Mm. I'm not a big pickle person. A big what? Pickles. Oh yeah, you don't. Some like pickles. pickles I like. Um, if I don't know. Really? Yeah, my mom and I went to Blue Ridge recently, mm. a couple months ago. Um, and the place where we had lunch, they had an appetizer that was like. It was basically a pimento cheese plate. So it had like two different types of pimento cheese, a couple oh, different like breads and crackers. Too. And oh, I love it. I know. And it had two different or maybe three different flavors of pickles that they made in house. Oh, and those were good. Two out of the three were good. <laughs> okay. There was one that we were both like, it was too pickly. I don't remember what it was exactly that I didn't like. I think it might have been a sweeter one. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't like Vegetables sweet. shouldn't be sweet. I don't sweet. like a sweet pickle either. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a dill. If there it's was, dill, I'll eat any type of pickle There was the a dill one, and there was like kind of a slightly spicy, herby kind of one. Okay, and I would probably one, like that one, It too. was really good. Um, but Dude, yeah, I'm not a huge pickle. One, one of the worst experiences of my life was I think you – we were making burgers a lot, and we were having burgers for dinner, mm-hmm. and I went to the grocery store – and bought what I thought were the burger chip dill pickles, but it turns out they were the bread and butter sweeter ones. And I bite, I'm so excited, man. And I bite into that burger and I, you just get the Christmas of the pickle and then it's sweet and you're just like, oh no, it was horrendous. I don't understand why or how people could like that. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't like you, to yuck people's yum, but I really just don't understand. If it. you like the sweeter pickles, please tell me why. I don't get it. And I don't I know if it's even know. something that you could explain. I am sure that my grandmother likes sweet pickles. I am yeah. 100% sure. I'm sure she because does. Because she, she likes everything sweet. There was one thing that we used to get. I don't remember what it was, but it was something that only she ate for Thanksgiving. And we didn't get it one time. It was like a side dish Grandma thing. Me? No, Graham. Oh, Graham. And it was like a side dish of like... Maybe it was pickled something. Well, Graham, I'm sure you're watching yeah, this. Yeah, please so comment, let us Graham. Know, let Graham. us know what it was because I remember you being really upset that we didn't buy it that one time. I remember my dad was really upset when he was a kid one time because his mom made a duck for Thanksgiving instead oh, of a turkey. I he still duck. talks about it. Yeah, I think I've heard that story before. Yeah. I'm not a f- big fan of duck. I've never really had it. It's not great. It's overrated. It's overrated. <laughs> Man, I could do overrated for the rest of my overrated life. Overrated foods, especially. Oh, dude. I mean, you're you're pretty picky, so I think you probably think a lot of foods are overrated. That's the thing. I don't like to say that foods are overrated because I don't eat a lot of food. But yeah. I feel comfortable saying that live events are overrated because yeah. I've been to a lot of live events. Yeah. And one or two have been good. <laughs> you know? Parades. All of it. It's just annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Firework shows. Ugh. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Yeah. I would be okay if we retired fireworks. Yeah. If we just never did them again. But, but not then, getting any better. We'd never get to play our favorite game. Which is, oh, Guns fireworks or, fireworks or gunshots. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun game that we play around here all the time. Which it's always fireworks. Mm. It's pretty much always fireworks. <laughs> I think probably 70 per, 70% of the time is fireworks. But we joke about it because every time there's fireworks, yeah. I mean, it could be the 4th of July and there's fireworks and someone will put on the neighborhood ring app. <laughs> Was that gunshots? gunshots? Like, no, it's the, July 4th. But it's the thing fireworks. is, it happened because... They were just shooting fireworks off on random days. Yes, there are. It could have been like October 17th and there were fireworks going off. And so then I was like, okay, this makes sense on the neighborhood app that it's like, are those fireworks? But then all I had to do was Google it Yeah, and it was the founding of Norcross. Oh yeah, it was some special Norcross event. Yeah, it was like a local event. Oh yeah. And we live pretty close to like the historic downtown. Yeah, babe, but do you think that the 70 year olds online can Google something? They'd just go to the next door figured out how to post it on the next door app they, they can't know figure that, out how to google they, it they know 
very linear tasks. Yeah, but I on like the internet. I like fireworks because mm. we get to play guns or fireworks. But I would be good with never. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I would be okay with it. It's like, but it's like they're not they're not they're not changing. They're not improving the technology yeah. of fireworks. I feel like we hit a point where fireworks were like, whoa, this is crazy, and then they've just been static for a long time. Yeah. You know, you know, we used to throw poppers at each other yeah you've told me oh, that dude only boys would do that we used to do that i'll never forget we were at my uncle's house and my cousins just were like let's throw these at each other and i was like this sounds like a great <laughs> idea they hurt really bad it's like throwing I'm rocks sure at, they do it's like throwing rocks at people but we oh know, my gosh at least we never shot bottle rockets at each other yeah although maybe we did I'm sure you probably did. Don't give young boys fireworks with without supervision. Like, no one... I was nine. That should go without saying. Yeah, but our parents were like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. It's like you, They're learning. Oh, man. All right. You want to do some... I thought we could do a fitness question. Okay. Because we haven't done one in a while. Yeah. But it's a very basic fitness question. Okay. I've been looking on Quora. Oh, yeah. Because the fitness Reddit has not been... Not good. I mean, it's all the same stuff. Yeah. Which, to a certain degree, that's fitness, man. Like, there's yeah. there's a couple things Once that work. Once you get the basics, yeah, yeah. The basics you can kind of run with it. I mean, you can go very deep, but... So, the, the question was, what is powerlifting? Oh. And I don't think a lot of people know what powerlifting Squat, is. Squat, bench, deadlift. There you go. That's yeah. it. At the end of the day, powerlifting is literally a sanctioned competition mm -hmm. in which you attempt to squat, bench, and deadlift three times, and then you add all of those together. You add your highest one from yes. each lift. Your highest successful one from each lift. Yeah. You add all those together, and that's your total. And then you base, you judge that total mm -hmm. against somebody else. Whoever has the highest total score wins. In your weight class. Yes. And then they win. That's powerlifting. Right. What I think, I've gone, famously I've gone on a rant about how stupid powerlifting is, and I do, you know, it is kind of dumb to watch. Yeah. But I think for me, the reason that I love it is it is one of the more focused ways to get into the gym. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like if you go in with like, a, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. That's great, but there's not really. It's hard to quantify right. your progress. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And same type of thing with like. I think Olympic weightlifting is a little too hard to get into because the lifts. I feel like the it's probably just from watching it. Yeah, a lot more injury prone. I don't know the way if it, they have to like. I don't know what the incidence of injury is, but I do know that it is way more technical yeah. than anything else. Yeah, like the lifts just carry with them a lot more. Technique. They look very hard. The way you have to like fling it all around. But the is other thing wild. too is you have to go to a specialized facility a lot of the times because commercial gyms don't mm. love people doing things overhead. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that's a huge liability. I think so. Yeah. So that's pretty hard to get into. CrossFit kind of has a bad reputation these days, but there are people that still love it. I think CrossFit is probably a little bit more injury prone. I don't want to say any mm -hmm. of these movements are injury prone. What happens in CrossFit is you're trying to appeal to a wide audience. Mm -hmm. And the way that they used to teach it was like one person per 20 people in a class. Mm -hmm. And all you would do was be like, guess which weight is good for you. And so some people would be loading too heavily yeah. or not have bet the, that's where the incidence of injury comes from. I feel like what you've said about powerlifting in the past, like powerlifting is like born, like it probably has, watching the competitions yeah pretty boring i think it's boring but to train as far but i think it's also very beginner friendly because yes. it's like can you pick something up off the floor yeah can you bend down and stand back up yeah can you bench like people know what these movements are at the end of so the day yes the barrier to entry is pretty low that's the thing in comparison to the other bigger strength yeah. sports like as a workout style it's pretty easy to quantify yeah. it's not complicated yeah. and you can like any gym even the like yeah. most crappy commercial just gyms with limited supplies yeah. they oh, would have what you need to do that's that. the, that's the thing about it is you like the barrier to entry is very low no matter what your favorite powerlifting influencer says the lifts are not very technical mm -mm. at all like there is some technique involved, obviously, but well, at the end sure. of the day, it's not like you're learning astrophysics. You just, or it's not like you're learning how to snatch 
with right. the Olympic. Um, right. I think it, yeah. I Like that would be much harder to learn than yes. how to properly do a deadlift. Yeah, 100%. You know? 100%. So it, but I do think the, pro- the problem is, is that it is very boring to train because if you're training it well. It's pretty repetitive. It's very repetitive. I think that's what bodybuilding has over it is you can add a lot more variety in your movements. Like accessory movements right. and stuff. Yeah. But bodybuilding, unfortunately, carries with it a ugly connotation of steroid abuse. Not to say that there is not steroid abuse in powerlifting. There definitely is. Yeah. But it's more so like you can win competitions in powerlifting mm-hmm. being drug free. Yeah. You cannot in in bodybuilding no. unless you are specifically competing in a drug free yeah. uh environment and even then there's always the shadow of someone found a, a russian compound that didn't get picked up on a test yeah because that's what these compounds are mm-hmm. like every year there's something new that comes out of china or comes out of russia that will not get picked up on on a doping test yeah and so they're taking that to continue to help them get stronger right so even if you're competing in one of the most tested federations, there's always going to be the people that are screaming, oh, he's a fake natty. That's just always going to be there. Yeah. Whereas I feel like with powerlifting, while that may also be a thing, you can experience more success in the sport without mm-hmm. having to rely on the drugs. Mm-hmm. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Maybe you think that powerlifting is just as bad with the drug mm-hmm. abuse because it seems like High level athletes across the board are all using drugs. Yeah. CrossFit, same way. Olympic weightlifting, definitely. Really? Oh, yeah. Cro- the CrossFit games had massive, massive uh, drug test issues. Like, <laughs> I think it was like the top 10 women in the field uh-huh. all t- popped for some type of banned substance, and oh, the top no. like eight men all popped for some banned substance. Oh, no. Yeah. But like, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Like that, that when, when, (laughs) when the sport becomes so much your identity yeah, and you start to realize that you're slipping a little bit because naturally that's, what's going to happen. These people, you know, you're at your peak probably between the ages of like 28 and 34, 35. Yeah. And then unfortunately, biologically, unless you're very gifted and very blessed with great genetics, you're going to start to taper off, but that fire doesn't go anywhere. So you do what you can. Mm -hmm. to keep competing at a high level. And a lot of the times you're leveraging your seventies and your eighties for better performance in your thirties and your forties. Yeah. I'm not judging anybody on that. If that's your decision, go for it. Yeah. But there was a time a couple years ago where I thought, you know what, when I turn 30, I'm going to hop on some test, going to hop on some D ball, going to get a little bit stronger, all going to be fine. I'm, I'm the more that I read about it and the more that I see 25 year olds and 30 year olds dying of heart attacks, I got high blood pressure problems in my family. I don't really want to roll those dice. I would rather you didn't roll those you, dice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it is always going to carry with it risk. Absolutely. Right. I didn't mean for this to get on to a topic yeah. of drug, but I think drugs are, I mean, it's a big part of the weightlifting. It's becoming, it is becoming more and more prevalent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because I, for one, a positive side is more, you can find more information about it, mm-hmm. which is positive because that's going to stop a lot of people or in theory, stop a lot of people from mm-hmm. just blasting in, insane doses of whatever drug yeah. trying to get as big as possible and mm-hmm. then dying. Yeah. That's because so back in the eighties and the nineties, we saw all these huge humans, but nobody really knew what was going on. You could yeah. say the people that were in the inner circles knew. Sure. But now we know dosages. We know how to get your blood checked. We know how to loop. You can just Google it. Yeah. We mm-hmm. know how to loop physicians in to say like, hey, I'm doing this and that without like forcing them to call the police on you. Because at the end of the day, these are all substance or uh, level one, whatever. Like controlled substances. They're controlled substances. Yeah. So they are still illegal unless they're prescribed, but you can talk to physicians in a way that doesn't put anybody in an ethical bind. You can find all this stuff out now. Mm -hmm. That is a double edged sword because now it's a little bit easier for you to game the system Mm -hmm. and, and figure out your way to get some of these compounds. But I think in all sport, I mean, it's not just weightlifting. 
Tour de France, baseball, all, mm-hmm. like all sport, all competition. Yeah. It's human nature to want to be able to perform at a high level. Sure. For whatever reason, money, maybe that is your own, like we talked about a, like a that's long time identity. ago. That's your identity. Yeah. I get it. The other thing too now is you've created an environment where you can make a career out of the way that you look. Mm -hmm. So now with Instagram and TikTok, now you've got 18, 19, 20 year olds who see these huge influencers and say, okay, well, I take a little bit of test. I do do some this and some that. I get really big. I put out like a year's worth of videos. I get sponsored by a big company. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't really I can't see so far in the future to know that when I'm 60, my I'm gonna have to be on consistent testosterone replacement therapy because I've crushed my endocrine system. They don't think when you're that age, you don't think that you're gonna live that long. You know what I mean? Like the future, right. especially young men. Like it makes it, it doesn't have any meaning. The future to, doesn't exist. Yeah. You can I think, think it's the about same it. for any teenager. Right. I can only speak to my own experience, but yeah, sure. you felt like you were gonna live forever. So you are willing to leverage your future for fame, money. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm trying to make this my job. Mm -hmm. There have been times when I've thought if I looked a little bit better, if I was a little bit stronger, Mm -hmm. I would be able to get pushed by the algorithm. More people would more eyes on my content kind of as a cheat or Mm -hmm. like a fast track Mm -hmm. to get to where I want to be. All the time. Think mm-hmm. about that. So, you know, somebody with a little bit less risk av- aversion, a younger kid mm-hmm. is going to just He's say, gonna just go for it. You know what? Let me just take, you know, who cares? I'll, I'll figure it out later. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think it's, it's something that we're going to have to deal with forever. Yeah. I think especially in art in bodybuilding and powerlifting and CrossFit and Olympic weightlifting, all the strength sports, well, I mean, we we're supposed to be talking about powerlifting. Let's talk about powerlifting. How would you define powerlifting? That's interesting. Because I was on Instagram a couple of days ago, and somebody posted a poll and said, can you call yourself a powerlifter if you have not competed in a sanctioned meet? Mm. And the majority of it, I think the majority of people said no. And I think I really? agree with that. Because the follow-up question was, can you call yourself a basketball player if you've never played in the NBA? Well, sure you can. Really? Like if you play basketball just like for fun? I guess it's you don't just... You do not think you're a basketball player? Like no, you play I basketball. I guess it's, you're it's not a how profe- you would define You're yourself. not a professional basketball player. Right. Okay. But you play basketball. Okay. Well, what then, if you're on a community league team? Like you're on a team that has a schedule and like games. I guess it's just like in the hierarchy of the ways that when somebody asks you, what do you do? You would never say I'm a basketball player. Well, no. Exactly. If you're asking, what do you do for work? No, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, okay. But like, what do you do for fun? Yeah. You could say, I'm a basketball player. So I'm in, that on a same, team. in that same vein, you could say, I'm a power lifter. Yeah. Casually. I think so. Sure. I think this is the thing. I think it depends on how seriously you take your training, but I think I think if you take it really seriously, but maybe you just don't feel drawn to competition, which mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't. Yeah, no, I get like, that. If it's something that is like your number one interest in your life yeah. and like maybe it's not, I mean, it's not anybody's job really to be a power lifter. You can't make much money from it. Yeah. There are some like the elite Very few, few, but yeah, it's um, not, it's not like a huge but burgeoning it's profession. It's basically impossible to be an, a professional power lifter. Mm. So in that sense, what do you do? I'm a power lifter. Nobody could say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't think about it that way. Like That's that an point, interesting like outside even perspective. Even the guy from like Calgary Barbell. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a gym owner. Mm. He's not a, yeah, like professionally, yeah. like, yeah, he does a lot of competitions, but professionally he's a gym owner and a YouTuber. I think the issue is that it's more so how you define yourself. Yeah. Well, I think all of identity is self-defined. Yeah, true. So if you consider, I mean, that's all that matters. At like the if end you of the day. spend a lot of time in the gym and your philosophy is squat bench and deadlift as much as I can and chase the next PR, why can't you call yourself a power lifter? That's a really interesting perspective that I did not think about. Yeah. I think that that the sport unfortunately has a big problem with gatekeeping. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. A lot of things like, are that way. The, there, there is this machismo energy 
um, about it, which I I like to a certain degree because it's it's kind of what drew me to it in the first place. It's supposed to be like not hardcore, but like raw, yeah, strong. But there's raw. also times to be like the way that I am evolving in my view of powerlifting is as a vehicle for self betterment mm-hmm. or self improvement. Mm-hmm. So the way that I train people usually finds itself around a powerlifting style. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you do a squat pattern. I'm going to have you do a deadlift pattern. It may not be the competition legal squat and deadlift, but I think that those movements are so fundamental Mm -hmm. that we're going to do something like that, whether it's Mm machine-based, body weight-based, whatever. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and do, because I think that those have the best carryover. Yeah. So I always think back to one of my first athletes on my roster. When we started... She had she was a runner and just wanted to to do a little weightlifting. I don't even I don't really remember why, but like three months in, we started to talk about what I did, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Oh, I think that would be interesting to do." Mm-hmm. But we had already laid the foundation of teaching her to squat, teaching yeah. her to bench press, teaching right. her to deadlift, and then we just targeted it more, or we right. just brought the focus more tight. To actually powerlifting. Yeah, I think powerlifting is just kind of your workout philosophy sometimes. Yeah, I think I think so too. You I know? think that you can look at you can look at spheres of influence. Mm-hmm. And are you more in a powerlifting style? Are you more in a bodybuilding style? Are you more yeah. in a CrossFit style or whatever? And that's not contingent on you ever going into a competition for any of those sports. Yeah. That's interesting. I see my initial thought was. No, you got it. You got. You have to compete. But I may never compete again. And if I never it's compete like you again, you could if you wanted to. Because I don't you take a, it very seriously. Right, but I don't have a total on the books because I bombed out. Mm-hmm. So by my definition, sure, I was at a competition, but I yeah. hurt myself and never finished. <laughs> so I don't have a total. Right. There's the thing. You know. I yeah. I do think. I do think competitions are the powerlifting competitions are really good. Mm-hmm. because there's something about being in your own space when you're hitting PRs that is not the same. Like it's a different yeah. feeling when you're in a different gym most of the time, or you're in a different environment, you're having to do things under time pressure, all that stuff. Yeah. Right. So there, there it's a way to prove yourself a little bit more. I can see that. And a little bit more, um, legitimately, I guess. Mm hmm. Rather than like hitting a gym lift. Because the big thing is like if you've hit it in the gym, mm-hmm. you could all that could also be your PR, but most of the time it's a gym PR. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be the same. I think it's the same with any competition. I mean, when I was younger, I did a couple like piano competitions. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just kind of yeah. freeze a little yeah. bit. And like, you know, maybe you get through the song fine, but it's not nearly as like lyrical as when you were practicing it at home. home. Yeah. The pressure of the moment. I think that's very common. Or like we used to do choir competitions in high school. We were in choir. Mm -hmm. And I think there were some times when it just, the performance in the actual competition wasn't the best. It wasn't the best we'd ever done. Yeah. Um, Because there's the pressure of the moment. You're in an unfamiliar room. Maybe it's like really cold in there. (laughs) But I do, I think that that pressure is what life is kind of about. I think it makes you a better performer or a lifter or whatever. The more that you can do it, the more that you can understand how to work with that pressure, how to use that pressure. It's a new challenge that you don't get when you're just working out in the gym. I think that that is why I'm probably going to do another competition. Yeah. I just like had such a rough experience with my first one. Yeah. But I think that that was probably because I put a lot of pressure on it myself. Yeah. Rather than just because I want to do everything really, really well. I yeah. hold myself to a very, very high standard. Yeah. But I was trying to do too many things at once, mm-hmm. trying to be at a weight class where I probably shouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at myself now at 278 mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is, this feels like the weight that my frame was supposed to carry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Whereas I look back at those pictures when I was 248, 250, and maybe I would have gotten used to it, but it just didn't feel like me. Yeah. And especially in training, I mm-hmm. felt terrible Yeah, for like the last four weeks of that training. Yeah. So 
you know, maybe give myself a little grace and say, I'm going to go in at a higher weight, see how I feel at 275. Mm -hmm. And then if that one's terrible too, then maybe I just focus on coaching and I'm not an athlete anymore. That's fine. I mean, you can still be someone who power lifts in the gym. Exactly. I think I always will be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But maybe not just competition. the competition isn't what brings you joy. I think I've always felt better when my athletes do better. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's it. Yeah. I think it's important to challenge yourself and try things more than once. But, I mean, not everybody yeah, is going to love point. to compete. I mean, I'm... I and I like music. Person. Like I'm not a competitive person. I I don't have any desire to, you know. Compete. I think af yeah. After I finished football, I just like lost all yeah. competitive. And there's nothing wrong with being someone who enjoys competition. I yeah. think that that's fine too. It's just you either enjoy it or you don't. And I don't really love it. Yeah, but we'll. But get I think it, it's we'll important it to try shot. it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, like you learn some things, and now you can do it. You know, more intelligently. And the other thing too better. is I. If anything, I have a bunch of things to tell my clients not to do. Sure. From my own experience yeah. that, you know. So that's another like I feel like going through the competitive process, I can then be more of a mentor to people that do want to compete more because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I think that there is definitely value mm -hmm. in doing the thing that you coach or you teach. Right. Which which actually is an interesting concept because I'm I'm making a video about, and I've talked about this a lot, but like personal trainers or coaches looks, yeah, you know, and I'm trying to find the right way to frame it because I don't want it to come off like whiny, like me being like, oh, I don't have any clients because I'm fat. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I want it to actually be a discussion of like, yeah. is it important for the person who is giving you health and fitness advice to be healthy and fit? Like to have a six pack. Is what you're saying. Well, that that's another layer. I think just at its base, because there is there are body positive trainers mm -hmm. who, God bless them, I think maybe have taken the body positivity movement a little bit too far. Yeah. And are not really providing their clients with the best toolbox for success. Mm-hmm. And so you could say, you know, if you look just at the surface on these people, mm -hmm. they do not have the traditional look of a personal trainer mm -hmm. or a coach. I also do not have the traditional look of a personal trainer or a coach. Yeah. So if you just lined us both up and somebody said, you got to pick one of these two people to coach you, mm -hmm. who do you pick mm -hmm. in that scenario? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't blame anybody yeah. for... You know, the big thing on Instagram or on TikTok is you always, they always doing their video shirtless. They're always doing their video shirtless <laughs> because they're showing off the goods, they're baby. Show it off. Right? And the, for women, it's always, they're always filming from behind. Yeah. Oh, it because. With like the leggings totally up their butt. They're crack. ripping the leggings oh. right up their butt because, first of all, sex sells, but also yeah. there's, there's something to be said about, look what I've done for myself. Yeah. I can show you. How I to can do show it you too. how to do it, but mm -hmm. I think I am wary of those people because a lot. Of, and let me tell you mm -hmm. why. A lot of the times, if you're really, really, really fit or ripped or whatever, there's a huge genetic component to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you just your set point. You have a pretty low body fat right. percentage. If you're you able know. to hold a six pack year round. Most likely, it's very unusual. Most likely, genetically, you're predisposed to have a lower body fat percentage. Mm -hmm. So, what you do may not work for the guy who's coming to you who has sat around 30% of their uh, body fat percentage for their whole life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which it's hard to say, dig deep into your coaches when it's very surface level. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the times. Yeah. It's like you figured out how to do it for yourself, but could you figure out how to help somebody who it's a little bit more difficult for yeah. to do that as well? So I think some actionable tips, like if you're looking for coaches and you're looking online, which I think a lot of people do mm -hmm. see how many like, well, before and afters are also not a great thing. Cause a lot of clients shop, a lot Photoshop. of you're photoshopping. A lot of clients don't want like I don't have any clients mm -hmm. that are comfortable with me posting their before and afters. Mm -hmm. And that I'm never going to say, hey, 
my business needs me to be it. Like, like you're not going to guilt anybody. I'm never going to do that. Yeah. But no. there are people that just want, don't want their picture their before or their after picture out there. Yeah. I respect that. So there's got to be a way, like I think referrals are really good. Mm-hmm. Finding some ways that you can find trust with the coach that the coach knows Mm-hmm. what they're doing for you specifically or a person like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if it's a, if it's a 25 year old dude and you as a 45 year old mom of three mm-hmm. are going to him and he's trying to train you the same way that he trains himself. Yeah. Yeah. It may, it probably is not going to work. Maybe it is, yeah. but maybe it's not. Well, I think the first session is probably really important where you can get a feel for a coach and yeah. like ask them questions about their experience. Yeah. And I know you and some other coaches do like a consultation. That's before why I, signing that's up. why I have office hours is because right. I want, I always want to get you on the phone. I want to talk to you and I've turned people away. I've said, Hey, I don't think this is, if you're looking for high intensity Mm-hmm. Or you want to be coached through a keto diet plan or a paleo diet plan. I'm not the guy for you. Mm-hmm. My nutrition style is very lax. Mm-hmm. It's very macronutrient focused. Mm-hmm. It's very intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. It is not very strict. I'm not a keto coach. I'm not, a, you know, Yeah. Yeah. my training style is very much compound movements, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. That's fine. If yeah. I lose business because of that, that's fine because yeah. I want you to do something mm-hmm. and you would find more success in a coach that fits your style. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I think it's you know it's okay to shop around a little bit when you're looking for a coach. It's um, just hard because it is hard. They're gonna a lot of people are gonna give you the hard sell if you even reach out for like a consultation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and so that can be uncomfortable. A lot of people don't yeah. like being sold to. It's a hard thing, but I think the safest bet is probably referrals. Yeah, if you have somebody that you trust. Mm-hmm who has gone through the process mm-hmm. and vouches for the person, then mm-hmm. that's going to be nine times out of 10. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And then barring that. Yeah. If they have a lot of before and afters that seem to be legitimate, mm-hmm. I mean, you, people just steal that stuff. Yeah. Like there are do. tons of coaches on Instagram that just steal before and afters from like yeah. Vitamix commercials. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, it's, it's tough out there, man. There's a lot of people just faking their stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Referrals are probably your best bet. Like I found most of my clients are inside of my circle. Or like one layer out. Or one layer out. Friends, family, mm-hmm. or friends of friends. Mm-hmm. But I do want to try and bring in more people from all over the world. That's why I want, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think it's possible. Technology has given us the opportunity to do so. Yeah. But I don't have the marketable skills Meaning I don't, you know, I'm never going to have a six pack. I'm never going right. to, you know? Right. So you might have to work a little bit harder. I'm also not going to market like four week shred because, right. you know, I'm a long term guy. Well, and four week shreds are, I think, disingenuous. I do too. Yeah. But I think that, you know, they do very well. People yeah. run like an eight week, you pay all up front, mm-hmm. you get eight weeks of programming. And if you don't love it, you don't have to do it ever again. Mm -hmm. I think that's very impactful for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But for me, I want to be a big part of your life. And I want to be with you for a longer extent because I have found that is what works. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sell you a diet plan for 12 weeks or sell you a program for 12 weeks. I will if that's what you ask me for. Mm -hmm. But if if it were up for me, if it was up to me, long term. That's not what you're going to market. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Well, I I is this going out when we're on vacation? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, I don't know. No, this is we won't be on vacation yet. We will almost be on vacation. Yay. I don't know. Folks, I've run I've run into some staleness with this here podcast, and I don't know what else to talk about. So maybe we're going on hiatus. I don't know. Well, we're going to take at least one week break cuz we are going to be gonna out go of town. We're going on vacation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll be reinvigorated when we get back. You'll be rejuvenated. I somehow doubt that. Uh, Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Those of you that do hang out with us, we we Mm -hmm. enjoy your company. We do. Um, Yeah, next week we're off because we're going on vacation. But we will probably be back the week after. I think we will. Who knows? Thank you for watching. We will talk to you next. Nope, two weeks from now. Yep. Goodbye. Bye.